Hi, everybody. Let me just pause this music. How are we all going today? Good? Thumbs up is okay? Excellent. Um, just before we get started, I do want to uh, quickly check the role. I've written down most people who are here, but there's a couple of names I don't recognize, including Yeet Fest Bazooka. <laughs> who would that be? Hi, I'm Kev. Sorry, you cut out there. Who was it? Hi, I'm Kevin. Kevin. Hi, Kevin. There you go. My name is Kevin. Hi. Awesome. Um, I've also got someone marked as Florence. I'm not sure who that is. Hi, sorry, we're having difficulties um, sort of connecting the camera, but we're on and we've got Elliot and Gabriel. Elliot and Gabriel. Awesome. Okay. I think we're only waiting on one more person, so we can definitely get started. So to get us started off, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Krista. Um, I'm one of the senior tutors at Sydney Art School. I don't think I've met any of you. I teach um, my kids' classes over at Borkham Hills, um, but I have been teaching for quite a long time. I'm also a professional illustrator. I do ki uh, kids' books and picture books. Um, although not all of it is of in a sort of anime style, it does mean that I have quite a lot of experience uh, doing illustration. And everything that I'm going to be doing today is going to be digital. So I've got... I'll just give you a little quick preview here. Um, I've got Photoshop, which I'll be working on as we go. And um, just to give you an idea of some of the stuff we might be doing. So for example, this is a reference picture. Everyone can see that. Yep. And this is like an anime sketch that we might do based on the reference picture. So it's gonna be that kind of thing. Um, as I say, I'll be sharing my screen as necessary and it will be mostly on Photoshop. But we are gonna to start today just by talking about a little bit of um, theory kind of stuff. Um, I'm not gonna to go too heavy into theory, but I do wanna give you a little bit of background and, and maybe talk about some characters uh, that you might be familiar with or you might not be familiar with. And also just talk a little bit about some of the elements of anime because it's it's not maybe as straightforward as it looks, sort of just drawing cartoons. But that's why you're all here today is to have a bit of learning and, and figuring out how to draw anime. All right. So I'm going to bring up my... Bring up my slideshow again. That's what you're looking at the first page of the slideshow before. Okay, so this is us. We're doing the anime and manga online workshop. Um, we've got two sessions running today. So there's a morning session and an afternoon session. Um, and I'm not sure if you're all coming back for the afternoon session. I don't think so. I think we've got 14 people this morning and then 10 people this afternoon. So some of you will only be here for the, this morning. Um, but what we'll do is we'll just go through. So first off, just setting up Zoom and then um, we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Um, the first, if you have a look at lesson uh, number five or element number five, facial proportion. Um, that's going to be what we're focusing mostly on this morning is going to be about faces, drawing faces. And then this afternoon, we'll get into drawing the full figures. Okay, so this is just the, the first thing I want to talk about is using Zoom. I'm sure you're all very familiar with using Zoom by now because we've all had to do quite a lot of it over the last year. Um, I'm very happy to see all of your faces. Um, but also if you want to, so you can see the communicating anything, um, you can use reactions or the chat. I'm happy for you to use the chat to communicate. If you want to type something in the chat just to me, that's also fine. Um, but you can send a clapping emoji if you have a question and you want to ask it verbally, then you can put that clapping emoji up. And as soon as I notice, which will hopefully be more or less straight away, um, I'll unmute you and you can ask your question. Um, and then generally thumbs up if everything is going okay and if you understand. And you can do thumbs up as an emoji or also just thumbs up. Thumbs up in the screen is also fine. Um, this we sort of set up 
a little while ago. So I don't think you do need to practice muting and unmuting and video settings and stuff. I think we're all we're all pretty okay with that. Yeah. If anyone is having an issue, now's the time to put something in chat. Um, I did just have a question. So should we use our school art books or separate paper? That is a very good question. Um, as I said, I'm going to do mine digitally. Let me come to the next page here and we'll go across. So in terms of materials, I don't mind what you use today. So if you want to do sort of traditional drawing, um, and that would be like pencils, paper, eraser, that's fine. If you want to do digital drawing, so if you want to do like me and actually do digital drawing, that's also fine. I don't mind which way you want to do it. Um, but what I would suggest maybe it's it's kind of up to you. I think you could do it in your school art books um, or on a separate piece of paper. But if you do do it on a separate piece of paper, um, obviously you just want to make sure that you keep keep everything together so you don't lose it. So maybe popping it in a separate folder. Um, if we go back a page, I'll just show you. Um, I just got your question, Anais. I'll, I will answer that in just a sec uh, in just a second. I just want to talk about what we're going to do in terms of how uh, how I want you to send me your work. So I would like to give you feedback, and what I'll usually do, I teach all of the online classes during term as well. And so what I usually do is I get people to either take a nice clear photo of their work. So the examples you can see on the right hand side, those are from one of my students um, at two different stages of her work. And then I usually get, get you to email it to me. I will then download it. I'll bring it into Photoshop and then I'll alter it in Photoshop. So I'll show you, um, you know, any suggestions or anything that I have for, for how to change it. I'll put it in Photoshop and so you can actually see me live altering it in Photoshop. If you've got something like a scanner um, or if you do decide to sort of work digitally, then you should be able to take a screenshot um, and take a really nice clear picture then. And the same thing, just email it to me at that email address. And I'll also put that email address in the chat right now to everybody. And you just send that directly through to me. And then, as I say, I'll download it. I'll bring it up in uh, in Photoshop and I'll be able to give you critiquing as we go. That's my email address there that's just gone into the chat. Um, I did just get a message there from, whoops, Daisy, I sent that to you directly, Mia. Sorry about that. Let me send that to everybody. I didn't think it was replying directly no, to everybody. There we go. Um, yeah, if Mia just said that she's already done a little bit of practice, so I'd be more than happy if you want to send me something. Oh, I can just about see that. Send it to me. Send it to my email. I'd love you to send it to my email. Um, Max, I'm not sure what video you're sharing, but we're not going to be watching any videos today. This is all going to just be a live session. Um, so if everyone can just stay here in the Zoom chat, that would be really good. Um, okay, and then the question, Anais, you asked before, which is harder when learning, <clears throat> digital or hard copy? Um, I think that they're both they're both interesting and they're both different is what I would say. I don't think either of them is harder or easier. I think that there are things with digital work that do make it a little bit easier in the sense that um, you can adjust things quite quickly. And if you make a mistake, it's very easy to erase uh, something. I also, especially in Photoshop, I like the use of layers. So I will talk a little bit about using digital technology, but I'm, I'm sure if you've already got like a drawing tablet or something like that, you're probably already using it and you're probably already getting pretty good at it. Um, but layers, for example, you have different kinds of layers. Let me show you again on Photoshop. So if you can see over on the right hand side here, I've got these little folders here. And there's a background layer, which is white, and that's just giving us the white background. And then I've got a layer here. This is layer seven. And uh, it's like a transparent layer. It's, if you imagine it being um, like a clear piece of plastic. And so I've got layer seven, which is a clear layer. On top of that, 
there's another layer which is linked to it. And this layer is just blue. So if I unlink that, you'll see it makes the whole screen blue. And then I relink that again. And the reason I have that is so that when I draw on this layer, on layer seven, with black, if you look over here, it is black, it actually comes out blue. And the reason that's good is because it means that I can work lightly and I can, I can just do, uh, oops, do it on this one. I can just sketch, sketch quite lightly onto the blue layer. And then when I'm ready to actually do my final drawing, I go over the top of that with another layer. And I can use that layer to do my, my final drawing over the top. So I do really like using layers. I think um, they're really, really useful. And I think that that does make it a little bit easier using digital technology, but I'm also really a huge fan of traditional technology. So my own art is mostly traditional. Um, I do sort of digital inking, but I do traditional drawing and traditional watercolor for my own illustration. Um, because I think there's a lot of the sort of texture that you can only get um, really with traditional, traditional mediums. All right. Um, let's carry on. So as I said, any medium you want to use, I don't mind. If you want to just start off with pencil, um, mechanical pencils, I really like as well. Everyone knows what a mechanical pencil is. Yeah, it's like the sort of pencil that's got a really thin lead in it and you click the end of it. And I always like that because it stays the same sharpness all the time. You never have to sharpen it, which I think is really cool. Um, depending on how much time we have, if you've got colored markers or acrylic paints or colored pencils, you wanna do some coloring of your drawing. Um, that's also maybe a good idea. But again, you can use digital to do that too. Now, let's have a look at some examples. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about different types of anime because there are a lot of different types of anime. Um, I think people, people get very passionate about the type of anime that they like, um, but you do get lots and lots of different types of anime. And also included in this, we're gonna talk not just about anime and manga as in, uh, animated movies or TV shows and manga, which is the comic version of things is in the physical comic book or graphic novel style. We're also gonna have a little look at some uh, anime styles that are in computer games as well, because often there is a bit of crossover. Um, one of the examples we have later on is, is Pokemon and Yokai Watch. And both of those are uh, have, have crossed over to everything. So. There are both anime, TV shows, manga, which is the comic book uh, version, and also computer games. So there is a lot of crossover in the art style. So let's have a look. So this first one, you might know this one. This is My Neighbor Totoro, and uh, this is from Studio Ghibli by Hayao Miyazaki, the artwork originally is by. Um, and this is an older style is, is how I would describe it. It's also happens to be one of my favorite styles. I really, really love Studio Ghibli style art. I think it's, um, he, has, uh, he has a really particular, oops, sorry, I just brought the massive chat up on my screen. He has a really particular style, but what I think is really interesting about Miyazaki is that his characters always look really different. So this is the younger, daughter from the story. This is May. And if you have a look at her face shape, she has a really quite a square kind of face shape. And the distance between her nose and mouth, for example, is quite long. And it gives her a really specific kind of character. When we look at her older sister, though, um, I think Satsuke, Satsuke, I, I want to say is her name. Someone could correct me if that's not right. Um, you can see her face shape is, is different. Looking at them side by side, you can see there's two very distinct face shapes and very distinct hair as well. There's, there's a lot of difference between those two. And I think he's done a very nice job of describing two young girls who are of different ages as well. You can really tell, aside from just the height, you can really tell that May is much, much younger than her older sister. And, and that's, 
that's a real feature of Miyazaki's style is he goes to a lot of effort to make sure that every individual character has their own individual well character has their own individual face shape has their own individual expression um, and that as I say is a slightly older style um, I'm not sure on the exact date of my neighbor Totoro but I think it was the late 80s maybe early 90s um, so it's it's pretty old but it's I would say it's classic it's it's very much uh, it's very beloved and I don't know many people who don't love if not my neighbor Totoro then Miyazaki in general and Miyazaki uh, also did so I said I love Studio Ghibli me too um, they also did a lot of other movies um, including Spirited Away and, um, and one of my other favorites which is um, uh, Mononoke Hime, Princess Mononoke. It's very, very beautiful. A little bit older audience though. So that's looking at Miyazaki. Now let's have a look at another, and this is what I would describe as a completely different style, uh, Dragon Ball. I don't know if anyone knows Dragon Ball. Um, Dragon Ball is also very old. Dragon Ball has been around for a really long time, but um, it's continued as a very, very popular First as a manga, someone said, my friend is addicted to this. Yeah, absolutely. People do get addicted to Dragon Ball. Um, and again, it's slightly older style. Uh, Akira Toriyama is the, is the designer. And this started as a manga, which is the comic book, and then became an animated TV series. And it's been running for absolutely years and years and years. And then there's a new series uh, or recent series, I should say, which is Dragon Ball GT. Now, looking at the difference between the uh, character styles, the character design, I think it's pretty easy to see that there is a big difference between not just the younger version and the older version. This is uh, Goku. This is one of the main characters, at least from the original Dragon Ball series. Um, but you can see there's, there's a sense of the character in the shape of the eyebrows and the eyes and the overall expression, the hair, Often with manga and with anime, the hair is really where you get that distinctive character of the individual. But if we go and we look at, if we go back, go back one to Miyazaki, seeing the big difference between these two character designs, even just the way that the eyes are constructed, there's a pretty big difference between these two styles. Um, even though they would have been probably similar time, I would think, at least when they both started. So it's, as I say, there's a lot of variation between the way that anime is designed and has been designed over the years. Abby said her favorite is Spirited Away. Yes, I do love Spirited Away as well. It's lovely. Okay, now I mentioned we were gonna look at comic books as well, uh, sorry computer games I should say and so this is from the Legend of Zelda series which I don't know if anyone is familiar with the most recent one Arietti is also very good yes very true I do love Arietti actually it's a good one um so this is uh, the most recent one Breath of the Wild yes Kevin has just said Breath of the Wild is the best Breath of the Wild is the Legend of Zelda game which is on the left hand side there that you can see um, and then the two other ones, the ones that's in the middle and on the right, um, both of those are probably from the, uh, the time when it was DS as opposed to 3DS. So we're looking at spirit tracks, I would say, um, or around the same time as Wind Waker. I don't know how familiar anyone is with The Legend of Zelda. I won't bore you with listing off all of the games, but it's one of my favorite game series. I absolutely love Legend of Zelda. But anyway, the, the middle and uh, the middle and the right hand side one, um, they are what I would describe as chibi style. So this is another style of anime as well, which is chibi style. And chibi style is kind of uh, cute, essentially. So it's, if you notice, especially the middle character, his legs and his feet, there's no definition in his feet. There's very little definition in the arms or the legs. Um, the body is also shortened and the head is really, really big. 
there's a lot of hot discussion going on about uh, which is everyone's favorite Legend of Zelda at the moment, which I appreciate. Twilight Princess, very good. Yes, um, so I've seen My Hero Academia mentioned a couple of times. So I didn't, haven't got examples of every single anime here. And I'm very sorry for that. But I do, I know My Hero Academia as well. What I'm trying to show you here, I guess, is just an overview of the different kinds of styles that you have. Um, and so I haven't, <laughs> I haven't picked, I know, I do know My Hero Academia is very good. I do know that. Um, but I haven't, I haven't gone through and picked absolutely every anime or had a look at every anime because I do want to get to drawing. I think if we, we could just end up having essentially just sitting around for two and a half hours talking about how good anime is. Um, and I do want to get to some drawing. So we're just going to look at some examples. Um, let's have a look at, and these two I want to talk about. This is Pokemon and Yokai Watch. I don't know if everyone's familiar with these. The reason I'm bringing these ones up, um, I think the anime style, again, very different. We go back through what we've looked at so far. We were looking at very different anime styles. These two are quite similar in terms of the character design. Um, I mean, similar kinds of plots as well, to be fair. Um, essentially, sort of, uh, I mean, in this one, they're, they're meant to be animals, but they're sort of supernatural animals. And then in Yoko Watch, if, if anyone knows Yoko Watch, it's sort of spirits, spirits of Japanese spirits of things that get into furniture or electrical appliances or what have you. And it's a game uh, about catching catching these spirits or, or capturing these supernatural animals. Um, and both of these have been card games, they've been anime, they've been manga, they've been computer games. Um, some are saying they do know Yoko Watch, they used to watch it a lot. The game's actually really fun as well. I don't want to <laughs> promote the game too much, but it, on 3DS and uh, I think possibly on Switch maybe. Anyway, it's very, very enjoyable, really fun game. So with both of these, the reason I'm bringing them up is, is really to just talk about the character designs of the actual Pokemon and of the actual yokai. So in both of those, we've got these sort of, aside from the actual main characters, the human characters, we've got these supernatural characters, um, which are more, um, you know, some based on animals, a bit more chibi, but very, very unusual designs. Some of the recent Pokemon designs particularly, I mean, there's just like a floating set of keys. There's, there's lots of really interesting and, and quite wild design ideas that have gone into the additional characters. So not just talking about humanoid anime as well, looking looking at, uh, at different things like Pokemon and Yokai. I have a whole pocket deck sitting right next to you. <laughs> That's awesome, Mia. Um, okay, and then I think this is the last one. Yeah, so the last one I'm going to look at is uh, Naruto. Now, Naruto, the reason I chose Naruto is because I think Naruto is probably one of the earlier examples of the My Hero Academia and all of the sort of the high school drama um, stories that, that have become so popular. Um, I was also going to look at One Piece. I didn't end up deciding to add One Piece to it, but it, it is that kind of action adventure, usually boy driven story someone at school or uh, someone who's being raised in like a ninja dojo or something like that and with this one um with this one I wanted to show as well the sort of the difference between the young version of Naruto and the older version and this is also seeing the way the characters develop over time so he's still recognizably the same character but you can see that there's a difference in the shape of his face um, and there's obviously a difference in the shape of his body proportions as well, but it, it's quite subtle and it's interesting the way that characters develop and change over time. And I think Naruto is a good example of that because it has been going for such a long time, whereas some of these, the, the more uh, modern animes like My Hero Academia um, are a little bit more recent, so we maybe haven't seen the evolution of those characters yet. Okay, so that was a lot of me talking about anime. Um, we are going to get into looking now at facial proportions. And what I'm going to do, I've got a couple of notes here. So we're talking first about common facial proportions, as in general human facial proportions. And then we'll have a look at some anime facial proportions and children versus adults. Now, 
The reason I'm bringing this up first is because if we go through all of these characters, so Naruto, Yokai, Pokemon, um, Link from Zelda, Goku, and the two sisters from My Neighbor Totoro, any anime that you look at, having a look at, say, Mei there from, from that shot to this shot, there has to be consistency. So this is really important. If you are, I mean, if you're doing it as a hobby, that's absolutely fine and that's really good. But if you do want to say you want to draw your own manga or you're interested in pursuing uh, doing illustration or, you know, doing anything for, for comic books or for TV or anything else, um, consistency is the number one thing that anyone in the industry who would potentially hire you is going to be looking for. Your character has to be recognizably the same character page after page or frame after frame. And part of that means that there has to be like an internal logic to the way that your character is built. So when you look at any of these characters and these two characters side by side, their faces look different, but they are consistently the same character. And so even here, when I was saying with Naruto, Naruto, there's a younger version of him on the left and then there's an older version on the right, but it's consistently the same character. You look at his eyes and it's the same kind of eyes for both of them. And then you look at the eyes of, um, unfortunately, I've forgotten his name. If anyone knows his name, the guy on the left, uh, let me know. But <clears throat> if, you're, if you look at his eyes by comparison, they're distinctly different and they would also be consistently different every time that character was being drawn. So part of having consistency, Sasuke, thank you. Um, a couple of people jumped in with that. So Sasuke is the other character's name. So when you're drawing your character or designing your character or, or even copying a character, the thing that you should be thinking about or the, the place you should be starting is some of those facial proportions. So understanding how to construct the face and understanding what the general proportions are so that you can consistently replicate them. So common facial proportions, and this is on adult humans. So this is on um, a normal human adult. What we're looking at on the right hand side, that's an example from Andrew Loomis. Um, and Andrew Loomis was an illustrator and artist from many, many years ago, probably 1930s to about 1960s. Um, but he's, he did do a lot of books on illustrating. And even if you're just interested in doing anime, it's still extremely valuable to look at realistic work because every artist who has made a career out of being an anime artist, I guarantee they can all draw quite realistically as well because that's the sort of thing that gives you consistency is being able to draw from life as well as turn something into anime. So the common facial proportions, you might want to take a screen grab of this, um, although I can make this available afterwards as well. Uh, middle of the eyes is in the middle of the face. So if you go from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin, it's round about halfway is where the eyes are, the middle going through the eyes. Can everyone see my mouse when I'm gesturing here? I'm gesturing on the picture. Yeah, a couple of people are nodding, good. Um, also, still thinking about the eyes, the eyes are sort of one eye distance apart. So between the eyes, there's the same width as a single eye. And again, going back to if we have a look at our anime, that's still true for anime. If you have a look, the distance between his eyes is about the same distance as one eye width. So that is a one that's worth remembering. Uh, the ears line up with the eyes and nose. So the top of the ear lines up with the corner of the eye and the bottom of the ear lines up with the bottom of the nose. Um, the nose may line up with the insides of the eyes, depends on the nose width. So this is talking about the width now. Some people have wider noses, some people have skinnier noses. In anime, noses are usually kind of reduced to just a single line or a, or a small mark. So you may not 
notice that as often, but the position of the nose is still quite important um, in terms of creating the character of the face. And then the corners of the mouth often line up with the middle of the eyes or somewhere around the middle of the eyes. And between the eyes to the chin, the mouth is usually two thirds of the way down the face. So between the eyes to the chin, the mouth is about two thirds and the nose is around halfway between the eyes and the chin. So between the eyes and the chin, it's around about the nose. So as I said, this is the common facial proportions for an adult, but it's not the common facial proportions for an anime character. And why is that? Generally, um, most anime characters are young. So they might either be children or they might be teenagers. And the proportions of a child's face are significantly different to the proportion of an adult face. So if we have a look at the anime facial proportions, they're different to realistic proportions. Um, and the first major difference I would say is the position of the eyes. So I was saying before from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin on an adult, this line here, the halfway line would be directly through the middle of the eyes, but you can see it's not. Here it's about at the top of the eyes. And then if we go further down, so the nose is still halfway between, it's now between the top of the eyes to the chin. Um, and the mouth, the mouth is higher than halfway between the nose to the chin. So there's more distance between the bottom of the chin to the mouth than there is between the nose to the mouth. Does that make sense? Yeah, so far so good, okay. So this is the reason why, like if we have a look at this child, having a look at the anime face as well, do you notice some similarities? So anime face, big eyes, a small nose, small mouth, eyes are further down the face. So there's more distance from the top of the eyes to the top of the head than on an adult. And this has all got to do with the chin. So if you have a look here again, looking at the baby proportion, or sorry, the anime proportions, and then looking at the child, the reason why the child's face looks more like an anime face or vice versa is because the jaw is smaller. So when you're a baby, when you're a child and a toddler, your jaw hasn't developed yet. And so what that means is the top of your skull is the same size or a similar size to an adult, but the bottom half of your face is much, much smaller. And because your head overall is smaller than when you're an adult, your eyes appear bigger in your face. Now, this is just an interesting little aside fact. Your eyes are the same size when you are born as they are when you're an adult. So your eyeball size doesn't change at all as you grow up. But what does change is the rest of your skull. So the rest of your skull starts off smaller. And as you get older, as you grow up, your, the rest of your skull gets bigger and it makes your eyes look smaller in your face. But this is why children, like this child, this very adorable child on the right, you can see his eyes look bigger in his face. And also from the top of his head to the bottom of his chin, the eyes are more than halfway down the face. So the proportion of, uh, of children's faces is more similar to anime faces. And that's worth remembering when you're creating your characters. There should be more forehead. So from the top of the eyes, there should be more distance to the top of the head um, than you would do if you were drawing an adult. Now, if you have a look at the male uh, proportions. So often female anime proportions are more similar to kind of uh, children or teenagers. If you have a look at male proportions, they're usually a little bit more closer to adult proportions. Um, so you can see the eyes are slightly higher up the face and there is more of that jaw. So the jaw is bigger and heavier. And so you get slightly less of a younger look and, and a a slightly stronger look, but they are still not quite adult proportions. So there is still a reduction to the overall size of the jaw and the eyes are probably still a little bit bigger. 
All right, before we get started, we're gonna, I'm going to do a demonstration in a second and you can follow along. Um, and then, as I say, we'll do some critiquing. So I'll get you to take pictures of your work and you can send it through to me. But before we start, is there any questions? You can either ask a question verbally by um, putting your hand up and I'll call your name and you can unmute. Or if you want to put a question in the chat. Okay, so Mia's just asked, can we design our own? Um, yes, we will a little bit later, but to start with, I'm just gonna do one that's gonna be just a general kind of character design, and I'll just get you to follow along with that one. Is that okay with everybody? Um, so Mia said you kind of already did. So are you saying you've already done a character design? Because if you've already done a character design, I'm happy to have a look at it. Um, but we've got the the class is not necessarily for people who are experienced. Um, we haven't really got a specific level. So even if you have done anime drawing before, um, I'm quite, uh, I would really like to go through a bit of a step by step uh, and have everyone follow along. And I know that might be stuff that you, some of it you might already know, but everyone teaches a little bit differently and people do say things a little bit differently. Um, so having a bit of a step-by-step -step can, you know, it, it might help you then when you are designing your own characters. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I was saying there is having you follow along step-by-step -step and then when a little bit later, I will give you the option to design your own character. Um, the step-by-step -step I'm hoping will just provide you with some framework so that you can then go ahead and, and use that for anything, anything you want to do. All right, so I'm back again. Hello. Uh, let me just pull up Photoshop. Okay, so just going to close the chat. You can always ask more questions if you want, but I'm just going to close that chat for a second. Go over to face references. Okay. So I've got a couple of those templates that I showed you. So this is the, the female one and the male one. And we're gonna do both of those as a step-by-step. -step. So uh, let me just pull up the video controls here. Now, has everybody, is everyone ready to go? Has everyone got their paper ready or you've got your drawing tablet or whatever it is that you're gonna use? So lots of nodding, thumbs up, excellent, okay. So if you are using, um, like me, if you're using anything that's digital, I mentioned very briefly using Photoshop and I'm not, this is not a Photoshop tutorial, so I'm not going to get heavy into how to use Photoshop. Um, but if you happen to be using Photoshop, this is what I, how I tend to set up my page. So I'll start off with a, a sketching layer. So I've got layer 24 over here as a sketching layer. And then I'm going to turn that sketching layer blue and link it to the layer underneath. So what it means now is if I draw on layer 24, even with a black pen, then it's going to come out, going to come out blue. Let me just turn the opacity on that a little bit down. And then I thought I had my brushes loaded. It doesn't look like I do. Just bear with me a second. I'm just going to load a brush. Just while I'm doing that. That's confusing. Sorry, sorry, Kia. Okay. Um, is anyone actually using Photoshop? Because if you're not using Photoshop, then 
what I'm saying. I don't know how much it matters. No, no one's using Photoshop. Nope. Okay. If you're not using Photoshop, don't worry about it. Where, where this concept has come from, I guess, just to give you some thought of why I'm doing it. Um, if you go way, way back in time to uh, comic artists way back in the day using um, like doing comic art, you know, Marvel, DC Comics, whatever, um, what people used to do is they would draw in a blue pencil. So they would actually draw, sketch everything in a blue pencil and then that would be the sketch of the characters or, you know, comic panels or whatever. And then the uh, inker, which was usually a separate person, the inker would come over and they would ink over the top of the blue. And when they copied it and printed it, you couldn't see the blue. That was the point. Um, so that, that's the only reason why I'm doing it in blue because it's old school, traditional kind of thing. But if you're just using pencil and paper, that's totally fine. Um, okay, the reason I'm doing in, a few people asking why am I doing it in landscape? The only reason I'm doing it in landscape is because when I bring up, Tana, when I bring up my example one, that's on one side and my drawing is going to be on the other side. Um, so I brought it up in that way so that technically, yes, when I'm drawing on the right hand side, it is going to be portrait. Like if I draw, if I do this, then you can see that the amount of space I've given myself is a portrait amount of space. The only reason why it was landscape is because I do have this image over here. Okay, so my sketch is going to be in blue and then I'm gonna sketch over the top of that or draw over the top of that later. Now, the first thing I want to say to you, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do uh, a circle and then we're going to put the jaw on it. So we do circle to start with. Drawing a circle, as most of you have probably discovered, drawing a circle is not super easy. And so what I would say to you is, don't try and draw a circle really hard and dark and get it right the first time. I think you're better off doing a few light, sketchy, kind of round circles to start with. Um, yes, any size you want, ma'am. No restriction on sizes. Just make sure it's like a comf comfortably large so that you can actually get into a bit of detail. But yeah, if you try and start by drawing like a hard, dark circle the first time, it's really hard. And it also makes it difficult to then erase it. So I would always suggest start off lightly sketch a few times around the circle until you get basically the circle that you want. <laughs> Tracing a lid. <laughs> well, that's one way to go about it. Um, you're not always going to have the size of lid that you need though for a face so I think it is worth it is worth trying to get a circle now uh, adding to the circle I'm going to add this sort of triangular shape and the triangular shape is going to be the jaw now it's not just a straight up triangle there is um there is two parts to it so there's an angle that comes down and that's sort of like the sides of the jaw and then there's two angles that come in either side and those are going to make the chin so we've actually got one, two different angles on that jawline. I'm using a drawing tablet that's off to the right-hand side. So if, if all of my drawing is a little bit <laughs> skew if, like it's all slightly tipping to the right, you'll just have to forgive me. But I can adjust it as well. This is the thing I will say is good about digital technology is you can just move things around pretty easy. For yourselves, if you're hand drawing things, don't be afraid to move your paper around. So you don't always have to keep drawing from the same angle. You might find, you might find that you, uh, you have a certain angle that is easier for you to use, um, for you to use your pen from to move your hand. So find the best angle that works for you and move the paper to that angle. All right, so once we've got sort of our, we've got essentially, we've got a skull and we've got our jawline. 
The next thing to mark in is where our eyes are going to go, because the eyes are probably the big feature of the face that we always think about when we're thinking about doing anime. So we already mentioned the eyes are going to be, the top of the eyes are about halfway between the top of the head to the bottom of the chin. So I've even put it in a little bit too high. Let me erase that. See, I do mo most of my drawing is fairly realistic. I can't help myself. <laughs> end up just putting the eyes right in the middle of the head. It's very automatic. Um, okay, so we're going to do top of the eyes. That's where we're marking in top of the eyes. And then we'll mark in where we think the bottom of the eyes is going to go. So we're giving ourselves a top width and a bottom width. All of this, I just want to emphasize, all of this should be nice and light. So don't be too dark at this stage. And keep your a razor handy so you can rub things off as you go. Now, we already mentioned um, that there's one eye width between the eyes. Before we do that, let's just put a line down the middle of the face. So this is where the nose and the mouth, the middle of the mouth is going to be on this line and the nose. And now that we've got that line, we can also go, okay, let's put in the width, the width of the eyes, roughly. Remembering that this width from here to here should be the same as this width or close to it. We'll get rid of those. Now we will talk about uh, the particulars of eye shape um, and different kinds of eyes a little bit later in the workshop. As I said, this morning session is going to be mostly about facial features. Um, but for this stage, let's just make like sort of block in roughly where those eyes are going to go and get that distance between the eyes more or less right. Then we've got from halfway between this line to the chin is going to be the nose. So halfway between here and here, that's going to be where the nose is. And then if we mark the halfway point between the nose to the chin, the mouth is not there. That's too low. The mouth needs to be a little bit higher. So a bit higher than halfway. And we're already starting to get something that's looking a little bit like an anime character. Now I should also put in the neck. So the neck is going to be quite thin. And this is a feature of anime. If this was a real person, it would be a wider neck than this. We can put out the shoulders as well. And then we should also mark in the ears. So the ear proportions are the same as uh, the adult ear proportions I mentioned before. So top of the eye is going to be the top of the ear and the bottom of the nose is going to be the bottom of the ear. So the ear is going to be going in around about there. Now I should also say if anyone's struggling to keep up, please just do let me know. Um, so, sorry, Mia, um, she asked, uh, you planned your body shapes in a different piece of paper for the torso. Um, yeah, we will do body shapes and stuff later. So this is just faces at the moment. So it's up to you if you want to put them on the same piece of paper or not. Um, but if you've got spare paper, I would say, let's just do this one on a spare piece of paper. Um, we can also mark in eyebrows. Eyebrows are going to be up above the eyes. And all of this we're just marking in with straight lines at the moment. So you don't need to go into the roundness of those details just yet. Uh, we are going to decide on eye shape a little bit later, as I mentioned. But we can start at this stage, at our sort of sketching stage, we can start to create that sort of roundness across the top of the eyes. And then mark in just where the bottom of the eye is going to go. And in terms of getting the person to look at you, it's a little bit freaky when you first do it, but I would certainly say start off with the pupil. So you want to position the pupil so that it's looking at you. Um, now, what that means is looking at you is <laughs> sort of slightly hard to describe, but it, it's 
when you see it, you understand. So if I take those off again and I put them in, say, let's put them in over here. Like, I think we can all agree that that's a character that's looking to our right. They're not looking directly at us. And if I erase that again and I put it over here, now we've got a character that's looking to the left. So again, it's not looking at us. So getting the character to look right at you, um, it sort of depends on the position of the head and it depends on where you are, I guess, to a degree. But if you get it spot on, so if you do get it so that the character feels like it's looking at you, then they will look at you no matter where you are in the room as well. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm not trying to freak anyone out by doing these eyes. I know it's I know it's kind of a bit weird, but um, once we fill in the rest of the eye, it won't, it won't look as weird. Um, but in terms of getting the eye position, more what I'm emphasizing is start small. So get the position right in a small way first and kind of build it up. So like that's, I mean, that's a character that looks really, really scared to me. She's, I sort of expect to see like a big, a big teardrop on her face as well. <laughs> She's really freaking out. Um, but if you just start off with the little small eye and then you kind of make it gradually bigger, you can kind of keep a handle on making it so that it's still looking at you. And it's because it's just the pupil is why, is why the character looks a bit scared, I think. Um, if we fill it out, so we put on now the pupil, uh, sorry, the iris, I should say, the iris is the colored part, the pupil is the black part. If we put on the rest of the iris and bring the top eyelid down a little bit more, she starts to look a lot less kind of scared. It starts to look a bit more uh, relaxed. Okay. So this is my sketching stage. This is all the sort of setup of the character. I'm going to change now. I've added a new layer. This is layer 26. And this is almost like I was saying before, if you can imagine layers are like pieces of clear plastic. You kind of draw on one layer and then you put another piece of clear plastic on the top and then you draw over the top of that. That's essentially what I'm doing. And again, this goes back to really old school animation. So we were talking about Miyazaki before, which is um, who did Spirited Away and My Never Totoro and so on. This is how old traditional animation used to be done. So you would have a background that was like a painted, like literally like a painted layer. And then they would have transparency. So they'd have pieces of clear plastic that the animators painted um, the characters on top of and they would paint the character in one pose and then they would get a new piece of clear plastic and they would paint the character moving into the next pose and it was really time consuming as you can kind of imagine um, but that was the way that you did it so the way that I'm using these layers is very similar except it's just digital okay so has everyone got to this place I'm zooming in on her face scary Everyone's at this spot or just about. So what I would suggest you do now, I've, I've made this layer uh, less opaque. So I'm making it fainter and fainter. And that's so that when I draw my really clear layer of the top, it's gonna be nice and clean. Now, if you don't have pieces of clear plastic or you don't have uh, digital layers like I'm using. Um, what I would suggest now is take away most of your sketchy lines. So you can use either a plastic eraser or if you've got a kneadable eraser. Everyone, um, does everyone know what a kneadable eraser is? It's like a, it's like a putty eraser. It's like a piece of blue tack. Yes, Gabe is actually showing it on his screen right now. Um, and what you can do with the kneadable eraser is you can just pat it onto the pencil and it, it takes away most of the pencil without taking away all of the pencil. So you'll just end up with something like this where it's just really faint. Okay, so now it is what I would call the inking stage. And the inking stage is making it nice and clear and a bit more clean. So I've zoomed in a little bit and that's so that I can do a little bit finer work. 
And I'm going to start off with the eyes. So bring it across so we can see both at the same time. And first thing I'm going to do is make those top eyelids a bit darker. So generally speaking, on like a female or a feminine kind of character, you would have the top eyelid be much, much darker than the bottom eyelid. And you can see I'm making that curve. So I'm making it pointy on the inside, and then I'm making it a little bit thicker and darker as it goes to the outside. Try and make them as even as possible. And then we can add, this is a little bit of now the bottom eyelid that's curving around. Bottom eyelid. And the reason I'm starting here, the reason I start with the eyes is because I think that the eyes are one of those things that uh, is, like I said before, it's really characteristic of anime. You know, if you see, um, if you see a cartoon, the way that we would separate just a regular cartoon from probably an anime style cartoon, I think is often the eyes. So um, an example of a non-anime uh, style cartoon would be maybe like Adventure Time. Uh, you might all be a little bit too old to be watching Adventure Time now, but I do personally really love it. I think it's great. But anyway, um, Adventure Time is Western cartoon and it's, I would say, not of an anime style. And a lot of that has got to do with the, the character design in general, but certainly a big part of that would be the eyes. There's, there's no anime style to those eyes at all. Now, once we've done the top eyelid and the side of the bottom eyelid, let's put in some of those eyelashes. So she's got three eyelashes. You notice they're getting kind of smaller as they go towards the middle. We can add a little fourth one there. The same on the other side. And you can see even, even when I'm doing this digitally, and I'm using a pen that's, um, it's like a pencil. It's actually called a pencil pen. And I like it because it has that slightly penciled look to it, like it's the edges are slightly broken. Um, but I am building it up. So I'm not just doing one line. I'm doing lots of small sort of soft lines. Now I'm just using the eraser to sharpen those lines a little bit. I think that that's overall, and I'd say this for just all of your drawing in general, not just drawing anime, all of your drawing in general. Start off softer and smaller and slowly build things up. So I put in a couple of inside eyelashes as well. So a bit of inside eyelashes. Now she's got a bit thicker here on the inside of the eye. That's sort of indicating where the actual shape of the eye goes. Here's a little word for you while we're all drawing and sketching, caruncular. Um, let me spell it. Caruncular. Caruncular. Any thoughts on what a caruncular might be? It's something to do with the eye. Anyone want to have a guess or does anyone know what a caruncular is? No, no guesses? Oh, hang on, a couple of guesses. The worst tarantula. <laughs> very good. Uh, the bottom of the eye it is not very good guesses. Um, the caruncula is, if I drew it on here, the caruncula is this bit. So it's not in the drawing, but it's that bit. It's the fleshy bit of your eye where your tear ducts are. Everyone know the bit that I'm talking about now? Yep, Gabe's pointing at it. Yep, that's it. That's your caruncula. So there's a little word fact for you to <laughs> take away with you. Um, okay, and I'm going to keep going with this eye. I'm going to put in that pupil where we decided that pupil was. And the other pupil, again, start off at the middle of the pupil and slowly make it bigger until you feel like she's looking at you. 
as I said before, we're going to do a few different styles of eyes. So don't, don't worry too much about being uh, too individual with this eye just yet. And then we'll put in the iris. So iris is the colored bit of your eye. So she's got a gray, gray iris. And with all of this, just go, you see I'm doing one side and then the other side, one side and then the other side. And again, this is, I think, quite important is don't try and do all of one eye first. So we haven't like just completed this whole eye and then started doing the other eye because it's really, really hard, I think, to get both eyes right when you do that. You're better off starting doing the top shape of one eye first and then do the top shape of the other eye because that way you can check if you've just done essentially two lines like this. Now she's got eyebrows <laughs> in the middle of her forehead. If you do two, two sort of shapes like this and they're at the wrong height or they're the wrong shape, it's very easy to adjust those shapes. But if you've already started doing the entire eye and then you try and adjust it, that's really hard. So I always think do a little bit of an eye and then do a bit more of the other eye and then come back and do a bit of an eye and then do the other eye. So you go back and forth, back and forth, and you can keep checking to make sure that they're even then. All right, now she's got a little bit of an eyelid as well. You can see that little tiny bit of the curve of the top eyelid. And while we're here, we may as well give her eyebrows. She's got very thin eyebrows. So feel free to give her, I know that that's not the popular style of eyebrow at the moment. So if you want to give her thicker eyebrows, you can. Or if you want to keep them the same, that's also fine. Let's go with, I'm giving her slightly thicker eyebrows. All right, she's looking pretty good. Now the nose, the nose that they've given her in this example is just like literally a tiny line, just a little tiny line in the middle of her face. Another option for a nose, which is quite common um, and was on the Dragon Ball one, is like a triangle that gives you the side of the nose. That's another option. Um, or you could do, and this is probably the one that I would tend to do a bit more of, is kind of giving an indication of where the two nostrils are. So you're just doing like two lines either side, quite small to keep her looking kind of dainty. And then maybe underneath that, we give a little triangular shadow. And that's gonna be it for her nose. And then the mouth, the mouth on this one is sort of either side of the mouth. So not including the middle part of the lip. See, there's a gap. And that's again, pretty common in anime is just minimizing, minimizing the shapes around the mouth and nose. So a lot of the time, I think when people are, um, when people are doing even realistic drawings, they'll tend to sort of draw like a nose that is both sides of the nose and both nostrils, kind of like this. Does that look familiar to anyone, that nose shape? Yeah, a few people are nodding, yeah. So anime is about really minimizing the nose shape. And honestly, I think it's a good lesson for even when you're drawing realistically, because drawing realistically, there's not really a line that goes like either side of the nose and the nostrils and then back up the other side of the nose. Usually what we'll see is a bit of a shadow and it might be a shadow under the nose or it might be a shadow that's um, like just on the side of the nose. You see, even that gives us like a sense that there is a nose there, there's a shape there, but we don't have to draw a big hard line around everything. And then with the mouth, we've just done essentially the line between the lips. Um, we could also put in a tiny bit of shape underneath the bottom lip. And that also gives us a bit more of an indication of that shape. But just like the nose, we don't have to do, we don't have to do this. We don't have to do like a hard line that goes all the way around the top lip and all the way around the bottom lip. 
because that almost always makes the person look like they're wearing lipstick. So if the person is wearing lipstick, then it's okay. But normally, if they're not wearing lipstick, then just putting in a sense of where the line through the middle of the lips is and underneath the bottom lip, that's usually enough. Sometimes you might also get this bit here. Does anyone know what that bit is called? That sort of the round shape that's under your nose. It's a word like caruncular. It's not caruncular though, that's in your eyes. Does anyone know what it's called? No, anatomy quiz time. Tarantula. <laughs> it is not a tarantula, <laughs> Max. On the, one of these days, that is going to be the right answer. That is called the philtrum. So this little bit here, that little bit in between the nose and your top lip, that is called your philtrum. Philtrum. That's it, Gabe. Well done. Okay. So we're almost at the point where it's time to put the outline of the face. And this is where I am definitely going to turn the paper around to make it easy, easier for myself to draw. So the reason I'm doing that is because for me personally, when I'm inking, um, and this is digitally inking, so doing my finished kind of work, or even um, traditional inking, which I do do as well. So using like a actual physical ink and a brush my preferred angle to draw is bottom left to top right so this is the the way that I find it comfortable to draw if I try and go top right to bottom left see that angle shape is different like it curves inwards and if I'm trying to do a straight line it's I find it harder to do a straight line going in that direction so I will always go, where possible, I'll go bottom left to top right. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. And so starting around her chin, and then get a much smoother line going bottom left to top right. And then I'm just going to keep turning the page around so I can keep doing that angle. Now, she doesn't have any hair at the moment, so I am going to put some hair on her in a second. So it won't go all the way around the top of her head, but we should have an ear. So we've got, let's have a look at an ear. An overall sort of semicircle shape that does get a little bit thinner at the bottom. Then, this line coming out from the cheek up to the corner, a semicircle here on the side of the face, and then a semicircle or sort of half semicircle line coming out of that. So you almost got like a Y shape here and here on the inside of the eye, and then a semicircle here. That's not obviously all the anatomy that's involved in an ear, but it's pretty good. It's a pretty good basis for making a, a simple kind of ear shape. I'm going to turn her face around and go around the other side. Keep turning that around. Your nose makes it look like a monkey, and Mira is saying. What's happened? What's happened to make it look like a monkey? What did you end up doing for your nose? Hang on, I can't see you on my screen at the moment, Mia. Where are you? Show me yours. Oh no, that's fine. That looks good. You're being too hard on yourself. I disagree. I don't think it looks like a monkey. <laughs> okay. And so I've got to do the other ear, swing the face around, do the other ear. So it's wider, wider at the top, and then coming down, 
I would say, Mia, just be careful with the ears because that will definitely make her look like a monkey if the ears are too big. <laughs> and then we go up to that corner and then coming down a little bit here. All right, let's zoom out and see how she's looking. Pretty good. If I don't say so myself. And let's zoom in. And I will put on so the neck. Coming down on the side. And on this side. Okay. Now we haven't finished the eyes just yet. Oh, uh, Kei, you're asking, is that how I say your name? Kei? Kiahi. Kiahi, sorry, Kiahi. Uh, let me just have a look at yours. Okay, show me yours. A little bit closer, a little bit closer. That looks great. That looks really, really good. Well done. Love it. Um, let me know if anyone else, if you want me to have a look at yours, more than happy to do so. But you've got to let me know because I am looking at my drawing <laughs> at the moment. Um, Okay, hairstyles. What kind of hairstyle should we go for here? Um, I'm thinking maybe I've gone back to my sketch layer because I want to sketch some hair on first. So I'm going like a long kind of fringe, a little bit there, and then coming over up to this side. Now the hair, the hair, this is if this is sort of the top of the skull that I've drawn. Who's showing me something? Gabe, show me yours. Looks great, Gabe. Gosh, everyone's done really well. Good work. Um, so the hairline needs to go above the skull. Like if you sort of pat your own, the top of your own head, you can feel that your hair isn't like flat to the top of your head. It's it puffed up a tiny bit. Oh, I'm glad. Mia just said it's looking less like a monkey as you're shaving a blend in the eyes. So that's really good. I'm very pleased. Is that I, Cassandra is showing me yours as well? Fantastic. Everyone's doing excellent. Love it. Um, so with, with the hair in mind, what I would say is you've got to pick a spot too. Like if you if you feel around your head, you'll find that there's a spot where your hair comes from, um, which is called the crown. It's the crown of your hair. So wherever your hair is, if you sort of feel the top of or the back, it might be towards the back of your hair, you'll feel a spot where your hair comes from. And often it's not right in the middle. It's usually off to, to one side a little bit. Um, so for for my my girl, I'm going to put the crown over to the side here. So I'm going to make her hair start from here and I'm going to puff it up a little bit. So making it slightly taller than the top of her hair, the top of her head, sorry. And then I'm just going to curl it. So she's just got like a little short kind of bob look. And you can do whatever you like with your hair for your person. So... That's going to be my hairstyle. Might bring a little bit in front of her ear as well. So I'm going to have to remove some of the skull that I've already put on to put on her hair. But that is okay. Uh, now, I can only see if, if you're showing me your work um, on your screen, I can only see like a tiny, a tiny little bit. So if you want me to really have a proper look at it, you do need to email it to me and let me know that you've emailed it to me. Um, and also, if you do say you don't like, if you email it to me and you don't want me to put it on screen for everyone else to see, then just let me know as well. I'm happy to just talk to you about your picture and give you some advice without bringing it up on the screen. Um, but I do think most of the time people think that their work is worse than it is. I think people's work is often a lot better than they give themselves credit for because we're all really hard on ourselves. Like, Every artist always feels like you, you only see the bad stuff about your own work. Um, okay, so with your 
the hairstyle you decide to put on your girl. It can be any kind of hairstyle that you want. But this is the hairstyle I'm going with. I'm going to bring a little bit in front of her ear. It's not dissimilar to my hair, actually. Well, mine's a little bit shorter than this. And something that you'll see in anime as well is often the eyelashes and eyebrows, even if they're meant to be behind the hair, they'll often kind of go through the hair. Um, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Like if you look at anime, you'll see, yeah, someone's giving me, Anais is giving me a thumbs up. Yeah, you'll often see like if there's hair, so we've got this, this hair coming down here, maybe that one's not so obvious, but like this one, even though the hair should be, um, you know, we shouldn't be able to see through the hair, you will still sort of see the eyebrow and the eyelashes particularly, will, you'll still see them through the hair. Um, now that one I don't have a good reason for. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that is. It's just, um, it seems to just be a quirk of anime. All right. There's probably a reason if we Googled it, there was probably some kind of reason for it. So hair is almost done. And it's now, it's quarter past 11. So I think I'm going to need like a five minute break pretty soon. Um, and then we'll go on to different facial features. Just zoom out a little bit and I'll zoom out again. So if I now get rid of my sketch layer, that's my anime girl. So that's my sketch layer. Just take that off. There she is. Oh, what am I talking about? That we haven't finished the eyes. Let's finish the eyes. We definitely need to finish the eyes before we have any kind of break. Okay. So having a look at our example girl. There's what we're seeing is, and we'll do a bit more about this when we do uh, just eyes, but you'll notice that there's there's highlights. So these, these white bits that are here and here and here and here, these are highlights. And the idea with a highlight, and you probably know this, but it's worth saying in case you don't, the, the point of a highlight is that it's telling your audience, it's telling the person looking at it where the light is supposed to be coming from. So with my anime girl, there's no clear sense of where the light is coming from, except we do have a little shadow under her nose. So that's giving us some indication of where the light's coming from. But in her eyes, there's nothing at the moment. And we can put something to make it clear where her uh, the light's coming from. And that would be a highlight and a shadow. And we've got both in these eyes. We've got the highlights, which is the really, really bright white parts. And then there's there's a one tone. So there's like a light gray on the bottom part of the eye. And then there's a dark gray on the top part of the eye. And you can see this curve, this sort of semicircular curve. If I just do it in blue over the top, it's more obvious. See the semicircular curve there? So that is the same shape as the eyelid. And that's the point because it's meant to be describing the shape of the eyelid. The eyelid, this part up here, is actually casting a shadow on the iris. So when we shade our eye in, first I'm going to shade in the iris, so the very, very light gray area here. I'm just going to shade all of the iris with that color. And that's going to be the light area of our eye. So shade all of that in. So when you're shading, if you're shading with just regular pencils, you want to just shade very, very lightly. So don't press too hard with your pencil. And then I'm going to put in this semicircle here. This semicircle is the shadow that's being cast by her eyelid. And you see, you can go straight through the pupil to make that semicircle. And it should be the same semicircle as the top of the eyelid. So it's the same shape. 
Hang on. Uh, yes. So Mia just asked like this, and you're showing me on your screen. Yes, that looks good. And then we also need to now put in the highlight. And so I'm going to change to a white pencil for the highlight and I'm increasing my opacity to 100. And so we go one highlight. So it's a light white circle. And in the original one, the example we're doing, they've also got a second, second little circle down here towards the bottom, the bottom of the eye. I take off my whoops, take off my sketch layer again. There we go without the sketch layer. And so that's very simple, very simple eyes. Now, while you're still working on that, so <clears throat> I want to show you um, another example of the same kind of concept. And this is something that you can use for not just eyes, and you can use it for human eyes, you can use it for animal eyes, you can also use it for like gemstones or for um, water droplets. So anything that is semi-transparent, you can use this for. So I'll do it separately over here. Let's say we have just a round shape to start with. So as I said, it could be an eye, a human eye, it could be an animal eye, it could be um, a water droplet. The first thing we want to do is put in a little bit of tone to show that the light is being blocked at least a little bit. And then I'm going to put in the highlight. And so the highlight is where the light is coming from. So let's make it in the same kind of spot. So it's already looking a little bit three-dimensional because we've got some tone, we've got some darker area, some shading, and we've got a little bit of light here. But it, it could look more three-dimensional. Now, if you think about light passing through something, what you will get is the light. So the light's coming in from this kind of direction. And what it means is this area, as it goes through, it's going to get a little bit bigger. So you're going to have an area where the light is kind of refracting. It hits the surface of the droplet or the eyeball or whatever. And then as it goes through and hits the ground or the surface of the eye, it gets bigger. Does that make sense to everyone? It's like if it was, if we're looking at it from the side here, so the light comes in here where it hits the surface, it's going to be that big, but the light is always getting bigger. So as it comes down, by the time it gets down here, it's like this big. Making sense so far? Yeah. So what does that mean for the way that it looks? What it means is that you will have an area on the other side of where the highlight is. So say sort of here, you have an area here that is a little bit lighter because it's, it's this bit. And then everything else around it, everything through here is going to be darker. Oops, let me just take off a bit of that though. So actually the area directly underneath the highlight ends up being the darkest area. And on the other side where it's, where it's refracting to, you get that lighter area. So see how that looks like, like a water drop or an eye or a gemstone? All we have to do to make it look like an eye, like a human eye, is put in the pupil. So if we put in the pupil here, in the middle there, we 
then it looks like an eye. And so that's the same principle of what's happening in our anime example as well. I'm just sort of explaining why it's happening. And it is something that you can use for lots of other stuff as well. <laughs> well, a couple of people are saying wow and doing big eye emoji. So I'm glad that's blown your minds, but it's very, very useful. I think I was about maybe 12 or 13 when I figured that out. And I thought, right, this changes everything. <laughs> this changes everything about how I'm drawing eyes from now on. All right. So hopefully you're at the point now where you have finished your example face. Um, as I said, we've been going for an hour and a half and I've been talking almost nonstop the entire time. So I'm going to just have to take a small break, maybe five minute break. Um, and everyone else can also take a break. So get yourselves a drink of water or go to the toilet or whatever you need to do. Um, and we will come back in five minutes. So we'll come back at 1130. Oh, I can see um, Mia's come prepared. She's got her bottle of water already ready to go. Very good. Um, so we'll come back at 11.30 um, to start again. As I say, this time we will go into a bit more detail about specific uh, different body shapes and, uh, sorry, different facial features, I should say. So we're going to do body shapes this afternoon. Okay, see you all in five. Do we just stay on the call or something? Because <laughs> I'm literally in my yes. room. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just stay on the call. I'm not I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm just muting myself so I can get up and go make a cup of tea and stuff and putting on the... Can you... I'm, I'm playing like a, just a lo-fi beats chill mix. Can people hear that when we're having a break? Mm, I'm not sure. No, not sure? Okay. Yep. Um, for anyone asking if they want want me to have a look at theirs when I come back. Okay. I'll still be on the call. I'm just gonna play against Miku again on FNF. Okay. She counters um anime, but she the I'm still trying to pass the last level. Mm -hmm. You have to spam the entire keyboard. <laughs> and she take I, I I complete the other levels. There's anime songs, they're really cute. The first awesome. one's Bobo, so I really like that one. I'm gonna go have a try now. Awesome. All right, well, we're not gonna be long, just five minutes, all right? Be back soon.
Just tell me, guys, when we're ready. I'm playing against something. <laughs> I'm gonna try on it. I'm gonna try me. Anyone know the anime song, Suck It Up? No. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Anyone play FNF? Funky Friday? Mm, I don't think no one has played that. <laughs> I think my friend does though. Yeah, I'm playing against Miku. Yay, <laughs> it's the Suck It Up song. Actually, it's practice. better than I expected. <laughs> and I'm literally vibing, but you don't know what I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm going to try it. It's pretty good to play the game. I'm going to continue while vibing. But you see me vibing, but you don't. Are you going to start? Or we're like still waiting for people. No, no, we're, we're gonna start again. I am back. Okay, cause I just paused the F and everything. Cause I saw <laughs> you. All good. Um, okay, so I did get some emails from people with their work. So the next question then is, is anyone like super uncomfortable with putting their work on the screen? Or is everyone okay with that? I got a few got messages from um, where did we get from mm, Natalie Paulson. That doesn't seem right. Who's that from? That's my mom. Oh, that's your mom. Okay. Um, oh, that was from a while ago. Was it? Yeah, yes. before the meeting. 
it was like from an hour ago. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll put I'll put my email back in the chat again. Okay, so that's that's in my chat, and so I've got uh, Gabrielle and Elliot. I've got your two here, um, and so they're both looking really good. Are you okay with me bringing them up in the chat? I mean, in the on screen. I think mum is Florence. Nope, no word. Okay. No, no, that's fine. Okay. So what I would just say to both of you, um, I think the like the only thing they they both look really really good. The only thing that I'm just going to say would be the top of the head needs to be bigger. And I think that that's kind of true kind of true for both of you. Maybe more Gabrielle um more so Gabrielle than Elliot, but just even for both of you. That's that's the only bit that I would say doesn't look quite right, but they they otherwise they both look really awesome. So you should be very happy with your result. Um, and I've also got from Michaela. So I'm not sure if you, oh, sorry. Oh, gosh, I said I've got the email from you and I didn't even comment on it. Well, the, the outline, it was only an outline is all I saw, um, Kehi, and the, the outline looked great. So the outline looked good. If you if you want to show me the rest of it, like how it looked after that, then I'd be really happy to see it. Um, hang on, who was I saying something to? I was saying something to, to Michaela. So I have a look at yours, Michaela, and I saw you did do the one from yesterday that you did as well. So your one from today, I think, looks really cool as well. I'm I do sort of slightly want to say the same thing though. The top of the head needs to be bigger. Um, so that's something when I was saying. Uh, when I was saying before about the difference between child proportion to adult proportion, the, the really big thing is how much distance from the eyes to the top of the head. There's more than you get even in like an adult. So that's something, it seems like consistently that's something for everybody to watch because a lot of the images that I'm seeing at the moment, it's particularly this kind of area is too big. So we can kind of, you can get, kind of go either way. You can either say that the forehead is too small. So the distance between here to here is too small. But another way of saying that is that from here to here is too big. So I think for the future pictures, um, that's what I would say is just trying to keep them, keep this proportion from eyes to the chin, try and keep that nice and small. And then from eyes to the top of the head, that can be, bigger um who just asked if I could have a look at this Abby have you got yours on screen Hang on, let me have a look yeah yeah it's good Abby it's, I think just same thing it's that top of the top of the head needs to be bigger so everyone from everyone that I've seen so far from the eyes down they all look really really good maybe some people the jaw is a little bit too big but it's it's good but it's just that top top of the head from the eyes up it's you've got to leave a lot more of a gap um i can't see where's yours mia i didn't see yours can you pull it back a little bit no no pull it away from the camera a little bit yeah yeah that's good that's good okay all right <clears throat> so I'll keep having a look if anyone's sending anything I will keep having a look but I do want to sort of get on with um, looking at some of the facial features and so going into a bit more specifics about you know different kinds of eyes and and that kind of stuff as well so that we're not just doing just one copy and then later on what we'll have a look at is doing um, maybe one of one of the characters. And so I've got some example characters on here. Let me just close these off. So I've got some example characters here, which were ones that I showed you before. So like Goku, my neighbor Totoro characters, Link, Pikachu, 
and Naruto. Um, uh, or you can pick your own. I don't mind, but I, I do want to do one of those before we finish up today. So let's carry on by having a look at uh, different, a few different sort of eye shapes is the next thing that I want to have a look at. So generally, let me just copy this one, make a new layer there. Um, yeah, so a few different ideas for eye shapes. Obviously, when when we're drawing eyes, there's there's lots of different eyes that we can do. And so the, the first eyes that we did were fairly kind of rounded eyes. But when you're looking at examples in anime, you'll see that there are all sorts of different eye shapes and all sorts of variety of um not just shape, but the amount of detail. So generally male eyes are gonna have less detail and probably like less eyelashes. And also the shape is probably gonna be a little bit different too. So what I wanna do now is just do a few eyes and we're just gonna do um, a few examples of common kind of eye shapes. So the first one we did was very much the rounded kind of eye shape, but if we were, you know, all eyes are round. So instead of saying round, if we go, well, what other kind of shape is it? I'd say we could kind of talk about there being an eye that would fit more or less into a square, which is, I think, what we kind of did in terms of overall, the whole eye shape sort of fits into a square. Then you have eyes that are more triangular um, and they can be more even triangular this way, which if we have a look at Goku, that's the triangular kind of eye. Um, or we might end up with eyes that are, again, a rectangle, but more of like a an open kind of rectangle, like a portrait style rectangle, which is very much um, May's eyes down the bottom there. She's got that kind of tall rectangular shape. And then I'd say another really common one would be the rhombus kind of shape. So it's sort of that, that kind of shape, um, which I don't know if I actually have an example of that one. Yeah, actually his, so Naruto's eyes, I would say kind of a rhombus, rhombus shape eye in the sense that they're, they're kind of coming, coming to a point over here and then dipping in a little bit more there. So what you can do now Witty's eyes are semicircles. Who's Witty? I don't know who Witty is, Mia. So what we'll do now is I want you to do, we've, we've already done an eye that was sort of fitting into a square. So let's do, we'll do a rhombus. So that's this one. We'll do triangle. And we'll do a tall rectangle. So similar kind of principles with all of these. And these are just some examples of eye shapes. And I'm not saying these are only, like these are all the examples of eye shapes. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, okay. So it's, it throws tantrums at the end of every round that you beat him in FNF, gotcha. Nice one. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's there's lots of different eye shapes. And I guess the, the point is a more, I want you to just think about the options that and and also when you're looking at different kinds of anime, trying to identify what is the the general kind of eye shape. Like I said, you know, looking at looking at Goku, that's definitely triangular kind of eyes. And what does it say about his character? It makes him look kind of tough. You know, it's it's sort of an aggressive, tough eye shape. If we look at May, her eye shape being that sort of tall portrait rectangle means that she has more of sort of a wide eyed kind of, um, you know, little kid look. Um, 
if we're looking at link, link's got more of the sort of square eye, especially the chibi version of link. And then like Naruto, Naruto's got the more of that rhombus shape. And that gives him more of a, I guess, a smart and shrewd kind of look without being maybe as aggressive as Goku's eyes. So we'll do just three examples using three different shapes. And then when you're designing your own characters, you can come up with all sorts of different examples and ideas. So to start off with, make those three shapes. So rhombus shape, triangle shape and tall rectangle shape. And we're going to do two eyes together because it's one thing to just practice one eye by itself. It's another thing to get two eyes that actually match one side and the other. And I think that that's something that a lot of people struggle with, especially when they're starting out. So I'm just going to take off these two and we'll do them separately. Um, and so remembering as well, we've got the distance, there's one eye distance between the eyes. And then we want another rhombus over on this side. And just like drawing the circles in the first place, have a few goes is my suggestion. So, you know, do some light sketching. Don't feel like you have to get it right the first time with a hard line. Just try and be a little bit sketchy and try and get it right with a couple of lines. So we've got our two rhombus shapes there which are around about one rhombus distance apart as well and then i'm going to slightly curve off this corner because that's going to be the corner of the eye and then curve off the inside as well so curving off this corner and then curving off the inside corner and already it's starting to get a nice kind of eye shape and we can curve off the angle down in that bottom edge too. Then thinking about where the pupil is going to go, saying start small with your pupils and make sure that they're looking at you as it were. And put in your iris shape. So have a think about while you're drawing as well, what sort of eye is this? What is this eye saying to us about the character? Like, is it a, is it a smart person? Is it a silly person? Is it a intelligent or a, you know, slightly crazy person? What sort of person does this eye give us? What sort of energy does that eye give us? And is it a feminine kind of eye? Is it a masculine kind of eye? Is it a neutral kind of eye? But we've got a nice basis for some eyes and then going over the top of that so I'll make that lighter and then I'm going to go over the top of that now with my black pencil so we don't need to start with that rhombus as much anymore but just like we started with the previous eye want the dark part to be thicker toward the outside corner of the eye and then getting thinner as it comes to the inside. And at this point, this is where I was saying to you as well, see we're just doing that curve across the top of the eye. And so we can decide, is it the right kind of shape? Do they match? Is one bigger than the other or are they too far apart? Are they too close together? So now's the time to be to be checking that. Um, and I feel like this left hand side eye is a little bit too small compared to the right hand side eye. And so I can either make the right hand side smaller or the left hand side bigger. And in this case, I want to make the left hand side bigger because I've got a computer. I can do that quite easily might be a little bit more difficult if I was drawing this by hand. It's a little bit easier. And so that looks a bit better. So I need to make this a little bit bigger. And like I said, just keep, keep doing, when you do a little bit of one side, you do come over and you do a little bit of the other side as well to keep them nice and even. 
Now, coming from that corner, so this is the bottom eyelid. We want to have something coming out of that bottom eyelid. Tighten that up. And then generally you have just a little mark near where the iris touches the eye. You have this all the way come down to that carunculum. Add some more eyelashes. And then fill in the iris. And the pupil. Now my pupil doesn't actually feel like it's quite in the right spot. So I'm just going to move that over a little bit. That feels better. Check this one as well. As I said, you start off with the middle. Make sure it's kind of looking at you. And then need to put a bit of shading. So a bit of color in the iris on both sides. And then the shadow of the top eyelid. So this is the same style of shading in the eye as the other one. And then we want to put a highlight. So I'm going to put the highlight on the other side this time. So that's the light highlight. And then as I was saying, it's, uh, it'll be a little bit lighter down the bottom here as well. And then we go, I've got different, different style of eye. So that one's based on the rhombus. Now we will go ahead and do two other styles of eye. But just while you're working on that one, if you haven't finished off yet, I want to give you a couple of minutes to finish off. And I want to also talk about the position of the iris and pupil and what it does to the expression. So if you think about <clears throat> you think about your eye, we've got your top, top eyelid here and you've got your bottom eyelid and then you've got your iris and your pupil. Now, where your iris and pupil are in that opening of your eye really determines the expression of the eye. So if you have, let's say, if we have the pupil coming all the way up and touching the top eyelid and then the iris doing that, And what we have, we have an eye that looks pretty, pretty well kind of relaxed and normal. I hope, I hope we can all agree. So it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like the eye is surprised or scared or anything like that. It just looks like a normal relaxed eye. And so that's the pupil is just touching the top eyelid or close to it. And the top of the iris, so if the iris is a full circle, the top of the iris up here is being covered by the top eyelid. So that's a relaxed eye. Now what happens if I change it so that the iris is all exposed? So that's part of the iris is covered is the example I just gave. And now I'm going to have it so that the whole iris is exposed. And I want you to see the difference. So if we go whole iris is exposed and pupil sort of in the middle of the eye then, but none of the top of the iris is covered. That looks more like a surprised eye, doesn't it? It's like an, it's starting to be like a, oh, kind of surprised eye. If I do one more, I'm going to show you one more just to emphasize this. We do one more where 
Now I'm going to cover part of the iris with the bottom eyelid and show all of the top of the iris. And have the pupil a little bit further down. Now we start to get an eye that looks a bit scared. Yeah. So the position of the pupil and the iris compared to the top eyelid and the bottom eyelid, it helps convey the expression. Yeah, so Cassandra's just saying, it looks kind of sad or scared. Exactly, yeah. So, and, and all I did then, I didn't change the top eyelid or the bottom eyelid at all. I just moved where the pupil and the iris was. So that's something to think about as well with your own work is, especially because I think what happens is it's less so it's less that people um, people do this on purpose I think it more often happens that people accidentally make someone look scared or sad <laughs> and then uh, and then they end up kind of going why did that happen that was a bit weird um, and usually that's what it's got to do with it's got to do with the position of your iris and your pupil and this applies to not just to anime drawing, this applies to everything. So anytime you're drawing a person, if you want to make them look like they're just relaxed and normal, then this, this is the way to do it. So it's having the pupil is either touching the top eyelid or pretty close to touching the top eyelid and the iris is partially covered at the top. So that's what we've done with both of the examples that we did so far. If you bring the eyelid even further down so that it starts to cover, part of the top eye, uh, top of the pupil, let me show you that. So bring it all the way down. So that top eyelid is now covering top of the pupil as well as half of the iris. Then we've got a sleepy eye. Then we've got an eye that looks like someone's slightly, slightly sleepy. So it's really important how much of the iris you show and how much of the pupil you show. Um, okay, good comments in the in the chat as well. Um, what I also want to say just about looking at anime eyes, sometimes you'll see different kinds of ways of describing the pupil and iris as well. So this way that we've done, this is pretty common where you can see the full pupil and you can see the full iris. But I have also seen anime eyes where it's sort of the usual kind of anime eye in the sense of, the top eyelid kind of idea and coming down into the bottom eyelid but then the the actual um the actual iris and pupil are just sort of really sketchy kind of pencil marks like this and then you'll get like the pupil is sort of like that. I can't think specifically what anime or manga I've seen it in, but does anyone know what I'm talking about? Has anyone seen eyes that look a bit like that? Maybe not so much. Okay. <laughs> but if I think of the example, I will let you know what the example is. Um, we are on till 12.30. Yeah, 12.30 today. Okay. It is 12 o'clock. Oof, I'm getting through a lot of stuff. Um, okay, now in terms of let's do let's do the triangular eyes. So bring that over here. Um, so triangular ones. And again, these still need to be the same distance from each other. Now with triangular eyes, especially when you're looking at like Goku style triangular eyes, you're also talking about a big eyebrows as well. There's gonna be some big eyebrows going on on top of those. And in terms of the amount of detail that's involved, we're looking at maybe iris and pupil and not much else, maybe the bottom, bottom of the eyelid. Just move this over. What we will do after we've done this one, I think we will move on to doing a character. 
because otherwise we are going to run out of time. So we're looking at straight lines and maybe big eyebrows. Because the big eyebrows forming a big part of the expression, I am doing them first. I draw against my bad side. Here we go. It's better. So big eyebrows. And then pupil. Pupil, sorry, iris, pupil, and we might get a little bit under the iris there. Bit of tone. Inside the iris. And a bit of an indication of where the side of the eye is going. So I want to take those eyebrows out a little bit further. So it doesn't look like one big eyelash. And then take that off. Zoom out. So that's going to be more of our angry man eye anime. Big, big eyebrows. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So with half an hour left to go, um, what I want to do is I do want you to now choose, um, in terms of like noses and mouths, as I said, they are going to be super simplified noses and mouths if you have a look at different examples we're looking at triangle triangle on the side of the nose to sort of indicate the shadow and the mouth is literally literally a line with a little shadow underneath it um, same with the Miyazaki girls, really simple, just like a single line for nose and mouth. So noses and mouths are very simple, especially chibi ones. Like some, some characters don't even have noses. So just paying attention, there's only so much that we can cover in a two and a half hour class. Um, but just in terms of when you're looking at characters, or you're looking at character designs, I want to give you an idea of what to, what to look for and what to think about. So with um, <clears throat> with something like this, thinking about the shape of the eye, is it like a rectangle or is it a rhombus or is it a triangle or whatever? Paying attention to how much of the pupil and eye is it, uh, pupil and iris is exposed, and then what is the shape of the nose? You know, is is it just like a small line with a shadow? Is the mouth just a line, and so on? Okay, so what we're going to do now until end of class. Um, you can pick your own reference. So that can be, if you want to quickly Google, there's a particular favorite character that you have. We're just going to do the face. You can do a little bit of the, the rest of the character of the body, um, or you can follow along with me. So I'm going to do uh, an example one as well. And the example one that I want to do is, where are we here? That's not in that one. I'm going to turn a photo into an anime. So as I said, you can draw along with me if you like, or you can choose your own one. 
but it's all going to start in the same kind of way. So we're all going to be starting, um, starting with the circle, the line, where the eyes are, where the nose are, all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to turn this picture into an anime picture by doing all of that stuff. So if you're working from something else, if you've got a different image that you want to work on, that's absolutely fine. Um, but just be making those decisions based on, based on your example. Does that all make sense to everybody? Yep, okay, great. All right. Let's get going. Um, I'm just gonna make a new, new layer. It's gonna be my drawing layer. Okay, like I said, if you wanna work the same, on the same character as me, that's fine. If not, following in the same, uh, on the same concept. Okay, so we're going to start off as we did with the first one, we're going to start off with a sketch. And the sketch that I'm going to do is first off the size, the general sort of size and shape of her head. It's a little bit dark, got a bit lighter. Make my pencil a bit smaller. So the first thing I said to you was when you're doing your circle, don't try and draw a hard circle to start with. You can sketch a circle you know, try and get it right. It's much better to do that than doing a really hard line that you won't be able to get rid of afterwards. Then the shape of her jaw, if we go across here, so making that triangular shape, it's not actually even on her face because her chin is a little bit off to one side. So when we're putting that jaw shape in like we did on the first one rather than having the jaw in the middle of the face we want to have it a little bit off to one side so we do an angle here an angle here and then coming across here and here we also need to make her jaw smaller to kind of anime the thigh her um, it's like i was saying she's this this girl is probably in her 20s maybe, which means that she has an adult size jaw. And to make her look more anime, we need to bring that down and make it small. So I'm making that jaw shape nice and small. Then we need a line down the middle of the, the head. And if we draw over here, if I draw where my circle is on her, and then where that jaw line is over here, have a look where the midline is going through her nose. It's not in the middle of the picture, it's off to one side. And it needs to go into the middle of the chin there. So the midline, that middle line is off to one side. It's not, it's not in the middle of her face, in the middle of that circle. <laughs> Don't get eaten by your own plush mirror. Now, in terms of where the eyes are, we remember that the eyes are just below the middle of the face. So we're going to move her eyes down a little bit too. And then the nose halfway between the eyes and the chin, and about there. And then the mouth a little bit higher than that. So we're already going to make some changes to the example one, because with her, see her eyes are higher up and her nose is maybe a little bit higher up and her mouth's a bit higher up. So I've already made a few changes. If you're just following along with my one, hopefully you'll just be able to follow what I'm doing. Um, but if you're using your own example, I want you to look at your own example, see where that middle line is and try and figure out where the eyes are. So they should be somewhere just below the middle of the face. Then we put in the width of her eyes, remembering they're about one eye width apart. And in terms of the shape of her eye, let's have a zoom in and have a look at the shape of her eye. We sort of go like that and across. I think she's got kind of a rhombus, rhombus kind of eye. 
So I'm going to put a rhombus, rhombus eye on her eye, which means slightly cha changing the shape of that box that I put in there. So rhombus kind of eye there. Now her other eye is a bit smaller because it's it's going around the corner. So it can't be quite the same size and shape. It needs to be a little bit more square, but it's still that kind of slightly rhombus shape. And then her eyebrows, her eyebrows are quite high. So put her eyebrows up here, which I think is also going to give her that kind of, I don't know, how would you describe her expression? She's slightly kind of like too cool she's a bit haughty she's kind of looking looking at you like she's pretty cool um and in terms of mouth we're just going to do hello who was that now her pupils and her iris because she's not straight onto us they're a little bit further over to the right So far, so good. We can't see her ear because her hair is in the way. So we'll put her hair down either side. Whoops. Accidentally move that. And her neck, where's her neck? It's coming out from here near her chin. And then she's got on sort of a sloppy hat. So we can have her hat on there as well. All right. So I've got all my sketching done. I'm going to make that lighter. And then put a new layer on top. And start to work on some of these details. So once... Once I've established like the shape and the character of her face, I don't really need to keep looking at the example that I've got. I can just focus on my sketch. As long as I'm really happy with my sketch. If I'm not super happy with my sketch, then I should keep adjusting it. Um, I might make her the bottom of her eyes. Might make them come up a little bit more. Um, Maybe just make her chin a tiny bit smaller as well. Maybe push her neck back a little bit. Maybe her neck looks a bit too wide. She's got kind of a cool girl look to her. All right. And then let's still, we'll start with the eyes. I'm going to bring these eyelids in rhombus style. We did and some eyelashes on the outside of the eyelid. And same on this side. Now, what I was just saying about her expression, I was saying with her expression, she sort of looks Don't please. kind of laid back and like she's slightly looking down her nose at us. Um, when we zoom in on her eyes, some of her pupil is being covered by her top eyelid. And so I haven't done that here. And so she doesn't look as... Um, she doesn't look as much like she's looking down at us. So if I change her pupil position, make it so that her pupils are being covered a little bit more by her top eyelid. That's going to give it more of that slightly relaxed, she almost looks slightly sad, slightly sad look. So 
pupils. Remember if we want to make her looking at us, start small and build it up. And put a little bit of the bottom eyelid underneath. And then eyebrows. And position of eyebrows does a lot for expression as well. Then for her nose, I'm just going to give her a little bit of the nostrils. Simple mouth, a little bit under the bottom lip. Let's have a look how it's looking so far. It's pretty good. And we'll go around the side of her cheek to her chin. Won't go too much further because she's got all of her hair coming in front here. So she's got long hair coming out from under that hat. It's a bit of her neck. And the collar. And then putting on her hat. So let's have a look. So we have, I have animified this girl. Now there's more that we can do to finish that off if we want. <clears throat> so we can certainly finish off her eyes, do more with her eyes. Pretty good there. So we can have the shadow. First color on the iris. And then a bit of shadow. Make sure the pupils are nice and dark. And put in the light into the eyes. And put a bit of shadow under her chin. Could put a triangle with a bit of tone next to her nose. We want to get a bit of shadow on there as well. I can still see you. Okay. <laughs> I was just going to say me here. I can still see you, definitely. Um, now, anything else that you want to do, there's, there's stuff that we can do in terms of shading. So usually if there's a little bit of shading, it's going to be pretty simple in Animate. So it might be as simple as like under her neck, neck, because of the hair. Hair's casting a shadow there. 
and side of the nose there, a little bit of the side of the lip. You'll also maybe have her hat is casting a bit of a shadow. You can actually see her hat's casting a shadow across her eyebrows. So if we wanted to have that as well, we could have a shadow coming in here. But generally, shadows on anime are going to be very flat, very flat and like everything kind of simplified. So don't go into too much detail. You want to just give an idea of the shape of the shadow. And it's usually just like an indication around the nose or a little bit under the lip, something like that. Okay, so we've got about... Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, Mia. Like, so Mia just said um, we should try and do that with a photo of ourselves too, but not during the call. Yeah, I mean, so much of this, because we've only got like two and a half hours, there's only so much we can go through. So what I really want to do is kind of give you some ideas and give you some of the general rules and principles of anime so that you can then take that away and use it for yourself. So um, as much as I do want to see how you're doing, and I was really happy seeing how everyone was doing the previous one, um, definitely keep practicing this. Like, I don't want you to just do this once on the call with me and then never do it again, because the only way to get better is by practicing and trying it more than once. So if you did do it to yourself, um, like a picture of yourself, I think that would be a fantastic idea. I had a slam sound next door on. Is it okay? I heard a slam sound. I had the, I felt the vibrations on the floor. On. Mm -hmm. oh, I hope everything's okay. Um. So yes, with our last I sort hear, of. Um, I, they're probably just cleaning something because okay. there's drawers on the deck. Mm -hmm. Um. So in the last kind of, we've only got a few minutes left. Um, so if you want to show me what you've done, now is a good time to show me what you've done. Um, I can see Abby, you said you wanted to have, you wanted me to have a look. So if you want to show me. Oh, that's nice. So what's the original picture? Um, it's from My Academia. Her name's Toga. Mm -hmm. and I drew her. It looks great. Can you hold it up to camera again? Excellent. Do, so was it helpful kind of looking at the picture and going, okay, what are the shape of her eyes? What's the shape of her nose? All that kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, who else wants to show me what they've done? Anybody? It's okay if you don't want to show me publicly as well. Oh, Maya. What's your one from? When mommy was back. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the face looks great. Um I will be, as I said, next next lesson. So the next um, afternoon session starts at one and we'll be going a bit more into like body structure and stuff. But today, this morning was just all about um, looking at looking at faces. So I think Gabe, you wanted to share yours as well? Ah, cool. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Is that based on something? Oh, hang on. I still can't hear you. I can see your mouth is moving, but I can't hear you. And I got an email as well. So while you're just trying to sort that out, Gabe, I'm just going to have a look at emails. So Cassandra, that's fantastic. It looks really, really good. So did you keep working on the one that we started with this morning? No, is that a new one? No, I did, I did a self-portrait. Fantastic. Yeah, good work. 
really good. And I see you've changed changed the hairstyle as well. I made it a little bit bigger. Looks great. Um, and Anais, I'm having a look at yours. Also very, very nice. I like the, um, yeah, we didn't get into much like added expression stuff of putting, you know, if you put like lines, so if we do stuff like put some lines across the cheek, then we've got a blushing character. So there is there is a lot more that we can cover, but hopefully we've covered quite a lot of basics. Um, I've got, so Max, I can see you've asked or you said you sent me an email, but I haven't actually got an email from you. Do you mind just trying to send it again? Um, and who hasn't shown me theirs yet? Michaela, did I have a look at yours? No, do you want to show me yours? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. That looks really good, really good. Very nice. I think the big thing that I'm noticing for everybody is that the proportions of the face are looking better from what I saw even just at the beginning this morning. Like the distance between the eyes looks better, the size from the eyes to the bottom of the chin looks better, and the top of the head is looking better too. So everyone's doing really well with that. Oh, Jack, yes, please show me yours. Awesome. Love it. Is that based on you? No, what's that one based on? Goku. Oh, it's Goku. Oh, yeah, I can see the hair now. I couldn't see the hair before. Very cool. All right, fantastic. Well, like I said, we're going to wrap up pretty soon. Um, so hopefully you all learnt quite a lot today. Does anyone have any questions just as we're finishing up? Um, who's, and maybe it's easier to ask, who's not coming back later? So Abby, you're not coming back. Oh, quite a few of you aren't coming back, okay. Um, is anyone coming back next week as well? Because I've got another class next week. Okay. So Michaela and Jack, are you coming back for the morning session or are you coming back for the afternoon session? Yeah, so if you're coming back, we're coming back at one o'clock. So it's only if you're booked in. Um, like I said, I've got I've got ten people booked in today. I think unless there's been new sign ups since I looked this morning, which is entirely possible. Uh, let me just see. This is that's ten a.m. to twelve, and then from one. So Mia, Cassandra, and Kevin, I've got are all coming back this afternoon and then there are a few of you I think are coming back next week okay well anyway what I'm going to do um I think because I think a few of you if you are just coming back next week I'm going to swap the classes around so I will do the body one the, the lesson that's about figures I'll do that in the morning next week so if, if you're missing out on that one today um, and you do still want to do it, then I'll, I'll start off the 10 a.m. session next week talking about figures and bodies first, and then I'll do the faces again in the afternoon. Um, so that might be an option for you as well. Um, but yeah, that's it. So we're going to wrap up for the day. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. And I hope you all learned a lot. That's the main thing. I had a lot of fun teaching you and it did go very, very fast. I was surprised at how quickly it went. Um, and yeah, I'll, hopefully I'll see you maybe at the school later or at a different session online class or something. So, um, and those of you I'll see you who are coming back, I'll see you at one or some of you I'll see you next week. All right, I'm gonna stop my share now so we can all see each other. Okay, see you later, everybody.